Hi there, Prayer Plant Girl here. Oh, it's really starting to feel like a greenhouse in here. Finally, I, the sun is shining and the snow is melting and it's turning to spring in our little cold part of the world here in Saskatchewan, Canada. And I have some things that need to be taken care of. So right now I have the plants that have been hanging out in my, in my greenhouse for a few weeks now, just on a heat mat with protection over them at night. I just have them soaking in some trays of water uh, just to, to get some bottom watering going. So I'm just need to get those cleaned up and out of my way here. And then I actually have a few things like this uh, bunny tails grass and this uh, flowering cabbage and maybe even the dusty miller that I'd like to get potted up into some larger containers. And then I have a bunch of seedlings that I had sown indoors and some of them are ready to get moved up into larger pots. So I have, what do I have in here? Some snapdragon, I have some snapdragons that need to be moved up and I have some osteospermum. They're not real big yet. They're just uh, at their seed leaf stage, but I think their roots will get too big for this little channel tray. So I'm gonna move them up. Uh, I might, what is this here? I can't remember what this was. Oh, and the pin cushion flower. I might move that up as well. The yarrow, the bright eyes chrysanthemum, and the salpiglosis I've already taken out of this tray. Oh, and the, um, is this the, the Jade Princess Millet, I think there, is that what that says? Yeah, I've already taken some of those. So a few more have come up since I pulled them out or in the case of the salpiglosis, it was just seeded really, really heavy and I just don't need that many. So there's a few more things that need to come out of here and a few things that are still growing on and I'm waiting. I think everything has come up now. Let's see, the fear few is really tiny and there's just about five in this row here. Oh, the impatience. For some reason, I think I have three, no, two rows of impatience here. Now it was safe seed and only one row came up. So I'm not sure what I did with that if I thought I seeded both and only did one because they're quite thick. I'm not sure what happened there. This is where the status, is that right? Yeah, the status was, so there's a few still trying to kind of pop up there, but for the most part, they're all done and the soap wart you see it's just just kind of coming up there but anyway so there's a few things that I'm going to take out of this tray a few things that are still going to stay in here so we're going to want to get that done and then if you caught my last video I was potting up my petunias because I wanted the trays from those and that's because I want to plant my zinnias and my marigolds in kind of larger trays because there's a lot of them and they they need similar requirements, so I may as well just plant them all in a big tray together. Then I have my gomfrina, my globe amaranth that I want to get sown. Is there anything else? I think that's all the seeds that need to be sown, things that need to get potted up. Anyways, I have a lot. I have some more snapdragons that I and foxglove that I sowed early that I could get to potted up in here. So I'm just gonna see what I can get done today and I'll try and bring you along for some of it and we'll show you what I got done in the end. Okay, so I got those moved out of the way. That's the first step here. Got a, it's not a huge space as I'm still trying to organize and figure out how I want everything set up in here. So it's kind of playing the shuffle game right now. And I also have construction materials sitting in here still as I still need to uh, cover off some of the gaps and things, but I'm waiting till it gets a little bit warmer Pop that over there. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my seedling mix. So there's my seed starting mix. It's obviously not mixed yet. So I just have some the standard stuff if you've watched my videos. It's just some peat moss and perlite and a little bit of vermiculite. So as I mix it in, I'm just gonna break up the bigger chunks here. There's always some bigger chunks of peat moss in there. Break up what I can. Brought you in a little bit closer here. And I have these two trays, water in them, so. Just get those cleaned up. Okay, so I have these, these two trays here that I am going to be planting my zinnias. And I think half of one will fit my marigolds that I want. 
So I have several kinds of zinnias. Let me yank them out of this basket here behind me while well, that's soaking. So the zinnias that I'm going to be doing, that I'm going to be sowing this year, I'm going to try and get a dozen of each sown. And I have berry tart. And this one is supposed to be actually ready to bloom in 35 to 60 days. And then I have California Double Giant. There's just a few seeds left in this package, but I picked up another package. Uh, so that should be, should be enough to get another dozen there. I have Zinderella Purple, and I'm not sure how many are left in here, so we'll see. I might only be able to get like half a dozen of these. I'm not sure. Uh, then I have Queenie Lime Orange, and I have two packs, so I should be able to get a dozen of those. I have Zahara Mixed. Again, I'm not sure how many. There's only a couple of seeds in here. So we'll see. We'll see if I have some extra space. Um, I might just save these two to do at the end. I might just combine a row or something with them. Uh, then I have the uh, Purple Prince. I have, this is a California Giants uh, mix, but it doesn't say double. So I was interested to see if these will be any different than the California Double Giants. Try and get a try and get a dozen of those and this is the Zahara raspberry mix oh sorry Zahara lemonade raspberry ra Zahara raspberry lemonade mix and uh, these I'm hoping to get a dozen of as well I think this is a new package I really like this these are, these are a little like bedding plant zinnia they're just a short little zinnia they're really pretty and I have since the first year I've grown them I've really enjoyed having them they look great in pots just as a little kind of filler plant or you know wrapped around your flower beds and things so nice little zinnia for that I have some saved seed and then I have my um, marigold. This is that white one that's labeled um, Eskimo. It was kind of, uh, as it kind of shows on the package, it's kind of a creamy yellow more than a white. It was nice. It wasn't quite what I was hoping for when I started last year, but I did find myself going for it a lot when I wanted some white in my cut flower arrangements. So I thought I'd sow what's left of these seeds. I, I think, I think I'll only get about a dozen of these as well. And then I have the um, the Bonita mix marigold, and that's what this will be save seed from. I just every year take a few heads. It's easy to save seeds off of marigolds, so I just save a few heads and and grow what I can off of that. In fact, this might even be save seed in here. I'm not sure. Um, no, it looks like old seed. So we'll probably get a few dozen of those. I like to put them around my garden and in my flower beds and just kind of everywhere. So that's my plan. My, my main goal is to get these seeds sown and then any potting up that I get done is just going to be a bonus for me today. We'll start with the sowing of seeds. So I think I need to get some tags made up so I don't get these mixed up because that's a lot of seeds I'm starting today and uh, I don't want to mess this up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so the seed tray is all filled up here and it's really quite simple to sow zinnias. They just want to be planted about a quarter of an inch deep. So I'm just going to go along and just put a slight little divot in each of these seed cells. Okay, so it's not difficult to plant these. Any of these seeds is the uh, zinnia or the marigold, very easy to sow. You can wait until about your average last frost and then just sow them directly outside if you want to do that. They will usually come up within a week or so. Uh, so if you sow them right around your average last frost date, usually that gives you enough time that if you get another late, later frost, usually the plants are safe by the time they germinate and sprout. So as long as your soil is warm, you can direct sow these around that time. And I do that some years. And some years I like to plant them ahead of time. 
So this year is just one of those years where I'm sewing them a little bit ahead of time. So if you're going to do that, usually around that six to eight week mark is perfect for doing that. I'm at about six and a half weeks before my average last frost right now. So great time to get them started. And I'm going to just plant them a quarter inch deep. So I'll just put a couple of seeds in each cell and I'll just cover them up very lightly with some more potty mix just to fill in that little divot I just made. I'll be covering them with a humidity dome and putting them someplace warm to germinate. I'm kind of toying with keeping them out here as the weather warms up, but I think they will go back in the house. I just don't trust it's been quite quite cold at night through March and it's looking like we're getting warm up we're getting some warmer weather but I'm just not sure yet anyways once you get them sown and you let them germinate as soon as they start to germinate like as soon as you have around 50% to 80% of your cells germinated and you're starting to see action take the humidity dome off you don't need a heat mat or anything like that just an average room temperature will be fine to get these to germinate and they need light so they don't need light to germinate neither of these seeds that i'm sowing today do but they will need light obviously a nice bright spot so a really bright window that's going to get good strong sunshine through most of the day would be good or under some grow lights would be another great option for growing these if you're starting them early and then you can just grow them until you have uh until you're safe from frost outside and plant them out. If they get quite large, sometimes they will in that amount of time, you might need to bump them up if you're starting with something that's this so small of a, a cell size like I am. And then zinnias and marigolds both like full sun. I find they can dry out a little bit if you, you know, get forgetful, but they do appreciate, you know, consistent moisture and consistent watering throughout the growing season. That's going to give you the best results. Marigolds, they'll just go. Marigolds are stalwarts in the garden. They'll just chug along no matter what. But uh, the zinnias, if you give them an extra feed, they will appreciate that. Just any general for blooming kind of fertilizer. So let's get these started. Here's the berry tart mix. Where's my tags? I do not want to mess mix these up. So there we go. Very tart. So let's bring you down here and you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to continue to do all the rest. That's zinnia seeds. If you've never worked with them before, you can see they're, they're pretty, pretty easy to handle kind of seed. And I just dipped that little hole and I'm just going to set, like I said, two seeds. In each hole and now they're not going to be completely deep and I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to get them kind of in the general general direction of heading into that little hole that I made and that's good enough. So I'm trying to get two in each hole. I'm not being super precise. I might have three in some. I will come along and I will thin these out later. So if you wanted, if you didn't want to have to thin them, I would suggest using a bigger container with bigger cells. And then you could put one in one corner and one in the other. And then when they germinate, you could take them and separate them out into their own pots. So that's another option for you if you just can't stand to cut out a seedling or if you'd really like to have several. And I don't worry about which way to turn them or anything. Some people will get really technical about that, but I have found it doesn't matter. So you can take the soil if you have like I do here and you have kind of some mounded soil and something, you can just take it and just kind of cover up the hole. And that's the same if you're using those little peat pot things or the cocoa core pots that expand. I find that's just to give it a little squeeze and cover them over is plenty. If you have a cell like this one here, it's maybe not as full. You might want to just come in with some extra potting mix. Cover it up. Do that maybe on these ones as well. And they just want to be covered, so just getting them nicely covered and tucked in a little bit. So it's really just that easy to plant these seeds. So I'm going to go through and I'll get the rest of my zinnias planted and then I'll show you what I do with my marigolds. It's not a lot more complicated 
but just to give you an idea and so you see what I'm doing, I'll let you see that when I'm done the zinnias. So I'll be right back as soon as I get these zinnias planted. What is it? I think it's 11 varieties. I can't remember for sure. When I have the tray all potted up, planted up here, I'm just going to go over with a really fine dusting of vermiculite. The vermiculite will just uh, take up extra moisture from the soil surface, a little bit of extra moisture, you know, and uh, release it again if the surface dries out a little bit. And that just can help with uh, keeping any fungus or algae down that might happen and help to keep it moist around where the seeds are germinating. Now, these are planted deep enough that's not gonna help too much with their germination, but it uh, should help to keep, you know, fungus and things from developing on top of the soil. And that helps keep things like fungus gnats from invading your little seedlings. So that's all there is to it. Um, this soil was quite damp that I used. I added a bit too much water to my mix. And I've had to push, I pushed them all down as I was uh, making sure they were covered with that quarter inch. So I'm not going to even spray these. You can maybe even tell that the vermiculite is kind of changing color here uh, because it's taking up some of that moisture. So I'm not going to worry about it. If your soil wasn't as damp, it would be a good idea to just go over with a spray bottle when you're done and just make sure it's good and moist at the top and that the seeds are settled down real well in the, in the, uh, seed cells so they're not uh, having pockets of air around them but the way I got these in here I'm not too concerned about that and I'm more concerned with having too much moisture at this point so I'm just going to pop this tray out of my way work on the next one and when I get to the marigolds I'll show you what I do with those since there's only what is that like six or so seeds of the Sahara mixed I'm just going to put one in each cell chances are they'll all come up That'll give me a full row, hopefully, and I won't have to thin them out at all. Okay, let's see what we have for that purple. Three seeds. <laughs> three seeds. One, two, three. So same thing. I just put one in each cell because try and get as many as I can out of it and then I'll just start in with my saved seed and I'm just gonna fill in the rest of this half maybe no I think I'll do here I'll do a dozen plus three of the saved seed that's what I'm gonna do now my own saved seed I don't know for sure what I collected these off of like I said probably Benary's Giant or California Giant I'm gonna try and put three seeds in each cell because it's my own safe seed. I'm not sure how well these were pollinated or, you know, if they were pollinated for sure, if they'd gotten too cold or too wet before I collected them. I'm not even sure what year. It says 2021 and I'm not out any money. If a bunch come up and I have to cut some off, it's not like I bought this seed. So I'm a little more willing to be a little more frivolous with it, I guess. Okay, so that's the zinnias. I won't worry about vermiculite until I've gotten the rest of this tray planted, but now I'm gonna go in with the marigolds. So I'll do the last dozen in this kind of side of the tray with the uh, Eskimo mix. I think I have enough for that, we'll see. So that's the marigold seeds, a little different looking than the uh, zinnias. And I take, uh, people have different theories about how to do this, but ever since I was a very young child, how I've been planting marigolds is I just take them and I just poke them in the soil the dark end down. They say to plant them an eighth of an inch deep. I don't know, I've always just done this. So if you wanna lay it on its side or whatever and do an eighth of an inch deep, then you do that and I won't tell you it's wrong. But this is what I have always done. They've always come up for me. And I don't know, I just kind of find joy in just stabbing the soil with these little seeds and just having them just poke in there like that. I suspect, you know, when you, a plant makes a seed like this, the point of it being kind of like a spear is that it'll catch, catch in the soil somewhere as it's blowing around and that's how it'll find a spot to land and germinate. That's just my theory. Do 
doing this also makes it very fast. Oh, if I hadn't dropped that one, I would have had the perfect amount, but I've one on the ground here. So, so here, let's see. I'm going to put the last cell. Oh, I don't even have, oh, I might have one more. Nope. The last cell, I just laid it down flat and I guess the package is empty. I needed that last seed that I dropped on the ground. Oh, well. So, just going to give them all a push and now that's supposed to be an eighth of an inch, which isn't very much. So I'm just going to put just the finest bit of soil over that one I laid on its side and we'll see if that somehow does something magically, magically different. But I've always just stabbed them in the soil like this and that's all I've done to plant a marigold. So I'm just going to do the rest and I just called them all Bonita mix. Um, I'll do whatever's in this package and then if I need more, I'll use the save seed. But. So again, I'm just putting two in each cell. If I can pick two up the right direction at the same time, I'm just jamming them in together. Otherwise, I'm going back and just putting a second one in after I've done the first one. And I'm not worried about getting them poked in like super up and down or anything, just however they land. That's how they land. I don't know if I said, but just like the, the uh, zinnias, if I get two coming up in a cell of marigolds, I'll just trim it back to just one plant. Now the save seed, well, it's actually pretty clean. Sometimes I'll have a lot of chaff and fluff in there, but this stuff's actually pretty clean. These seeds look longer than the others. And they're really squishy like this. I don't know if you can see how it's like really floppy. I don't think there's seeds in those. Normally a marigold seed is stiffer. Um, so if it's really floppy like that from your safe seed, I would put in a new one because it's probably not, if it won't just stab in the soil, I don't think it's a viable seed. Again, I, I don't really know. That's just my theory that I go with. Okay, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. It's just, I might not have enough um, vermiculite out here, but I'm just going to go over it for the exact same reason. And I have more vermiculite in the house, so I'll have to refill my dish here and go over the rest of the tray later. I think, I don't think I'll squeeze this out to the end. Oh, maybe I will. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. So there, that's the second tray done. So my seed sowing is done. Now I need to get some potting up done. I almost forgot that I wanted to sow some amaranth. So uh, this is globe amaranth. Another term you may have heard, another name for it that you may have heard is uh, gomfrina. So it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful flower, beautiful cut flower, but also a beautiful dried flower. So sometimes I get asked about what this, uh, <laughs> little bouquet, I guess you call it, of dried flowers is that I have here in my in my greenhouse. It's gomfrina. So this is the, I believe this was QIS lilac that I grew last year and I saved the seed heads and some of them I saved in their prime and some of them were a little overblown but they all look nice just the same and I've enjoyed having this little bouquet out here. So I have two types of gomfrina that I'm going to be sowing. One is QIS orange and one is the QIS lilac. From what I understand, QIS just means quality in seed. I don't know for sure, but that's my understanding of it. And this is just supposed to be sown about an eighth of an inch deep. So I did just run out of my uh, vermiculite that I have out here. But normally with things that just want to be an eighth of an inch deep, you want a really fine covering of uh, your potting mix or just a fine covering of vermiculite is fine on these. My potting mix is a little bit chunky, so I'll probably just put the seeds down and uh, then I will just 
go back over them when I get them in the house. I'll give them a little spray to make sure they're settled in out here. And then when I get them in the house, I'll go over them with vermiculite and that'll be enough for them. But there's the seed. I'm just gonna set like two seeds on the soil surface and spray them in, spray them in and uh, that'll be all I do here in the greenhouse until I get them inside. Now Gomfrina likes a nice sunny spot when you go to put it outside and you need to wait for all frost to be um, finished before it goes out and then grow it in a nice sunny spot with just average good draining soil. And last year was the first year I grew it, but it grew quite well for me. So hopefully that wasn't just beginner's luck, but I think it grows quite nicely. You get quite a few stems off of each plant. So here's the QIS orange. Again, I'll just put a couple of seeds on top. Like I said, I'll just spray these down real well. I've actually mixed up a new batch of mix here, so it's not as wet as the first stuff was. So it'll be okay to give them a good spray just to settle them. So the gonfrina uh, takes about one to two weeks to germinate. I'll just take it in my house. I'll have it in my plant room. It doesn't need any special bottom heat or anything to germinate. Uh, I will put it under my grow lights just because that's where everything is now. None of the instructions specifically say that they need light to germinate, but I find a lot of things that want to be planted so shallow with just an eighth of an inch of soil, a little bit of light on top doesn't hurt. I'll put a humidity dome on until they've germinated and then I'll remove it and just grow them on until I'm past my last frost date. And then they can get transplanted outside into a nice sunny spot with good draining soil. Now I'm going to do my uh, a potting of things. So I'm ready to pot some of these little seedlings that I started in this channel tray. Like I said, you could wait until they have uh, one set of true leaves. The first set of leaves that comes out on a off a seed is their seed leaves or their cotyledon leaves. And then the next leaves that come out usually look more like what that plant's leaves should look like. Those are the true leaves. So the second set of leaves that come out are the true leaves. So you could see here this yarrow right here. Hopefully you can see that. So see these leaves are kind of frilly, but if you look at the bottom, hopefully you can see down there, there's actually kind of a round leaf that's very generic looking like almost every other leaf. So like I said, you could wait for those true leaves to come out. It'd probably be more optimal, but some of these are getting really big and I just want them out of the way and I seem to be getting some fungus gnats in this tray so I'd like to try and get these as many of these seeds pulled out of here as I can and get this refreshed. I'm just going to go through and remember which ones I did. So this is the Potomac Orange Snap, sorry the Potomac Early Orange Snapdragon so I'm just going to go and try to scoop up. Oops, that wasn't what I was trying to do. Oh, and I want to put some little, dip some little holes in this tray here. So I'm just taking my little tray and just making some little space to drop the seedling into. And then I'll just take my seedling, just stick it where that hole is, and I'm just going to push it down and I'll actually plant it even a little bit deeper than it was. So I'll do another one for you if I can find another one here. This is part of why I want to get these moved. Some of them are really close together. Some of my best seedlings. I'd like to be able to just tease them apart if I can. And I find that's easiest to do when they're small. So now I have two plants that I can plant. Again, just take that seedling, find that little hole that I dibbed there, and just push it down into that space. 
So I'm just going to keep doing that and get whatever I can get out of here, out of here. There's some things that are just way too small yet to move up. They would just be too fussy and finicky to handle. I'd wind up breaking the stems and damaging the plants. The other things I'm going to pop out and get this cleaned out a bit here. Can you see the root on that? That's a little osteo and it hasn't even lost its uh, seed shell there yet. But that's why I want to get these out of here because they just seem like the way these plants grow, I maybe didn't pick good plants for in this row tray for some of these and they just need to come out. Okay, so I got the uh, pincushion flower or scabiosa. This is, uh, what is this, summer fruits. Got all nine of those out of there. Uh, the osteospermum, if you recall, I think I had this in a video where I was planting these and there wasn't very many in each package for seeds. And I wound up with nine of the sunset shades, but only six of the asti mix. Very disappointed in that. Hopefully more come up. I'll leave this tray for a few more days. Maybe a few more will come up, uh, but that's what it's looking like I have for right now. And then I have the Potomac Early Orange Snapdragon and the Rocket Mix Snapdragon. So I have nine of each of those. So that'll be really nice to have those. So that's my seedlings planted and a few of my tiny seedlings up potted. Now I need to get some of these other larger plants potted up here. So we'll get this out of the way and work on some more. So what I want to start with potting up is this bunny tails grass. It's looking really nice, but it needs a bigger home. And this Dusty Miller. I have two trays of Dusty Miller. I'm just going to be put it, potting them up into just slightly larger trays. So you can see the difference there. It's another six pack. Um, but it'll definitely give them, that's about twice as much space as they have now. So that'll be good for them. I'm hoping to get the Dusty Miller for sure planted out in the next just couple of weeks here. And the bunny tails grass, maybe. So we'll see, um, but I think they, I think these Dusty Miller will, will grow better if I can get them potted up into something larger. They're doing well, but I think being in this size is maybe stunting them. And actually it looks like I might have two plants in some of these. So I might be able to even get another tray out of this. So this is just um, my potting soil that I purchased. And I've added just a little bit of light to it just to give it just a little bit more drainage while they're in these little pots. This is actually from a bag out here so the weather's definitely warming up because I was able to get soil out of a bag from out here. It's a little bit chilly. Should be okay. So I'm not packing the soil in here. Just filling it up, tamping it down and then Topping it up if, if it needs. So I filled those up. It's going to be the same kind of process as it was with this small seedling. So I'm just going to dip a little hole. I'm hoping I can get these three filled with the Dusty Miller. So it does look like some of those Dusty Miller have a couple, couple in them. So just move my tag over. And I'm actually just going to see if I can just, there we go, just pull this sucker out. So there, there it is. Some nice root development on there. And there is two plants in here, just as I suspect. Actually, there might be three. Not sure how that happened. I thought I had thinned these out, but I guess not. So there's one nice big plant. Just pop it in the hole. Two here. Break those apart. Oops. Not quite that deep. Again, nice root development. And again, two plants, so I'm not sure if I did thin these out like I thought I had. 
actually there's three in here. Oh my goodness. You wind up with a lot of Dusty Miller. I can't believe how well these plants were doing for how crowded they were. I think every single cell has had three plants in it. This one doesn't. There, that's a single plant. Lots of roots on it. a single with just a little tiny baby coming so we'll just pop that baby out. I'm going to take some of the soil off the bottom there just to make it fit better. And that one looks like it's a double again. Huh. What was I doing? So it looks like I'll need another tray and I'll get these planted up as well. They all look like they have several in each cell as well. And then I'll move on to the bunny tails grass. So with the bunny tails grass, I just have several planted in a cell and I'm just going to kind of tease it apart, keeping several in each cell. I think you probably could grow it just one to a cell, but I don't, that's what I do. So just put them in there. So there you can hopefully see the difference there. There's lots in each cell. Just pull it apart. Just gonna push them down. This one has more roots, so we'll make more of a hole. Push it down. They look a little rough right now, but they will bounce back. This one is just two plants, so maybe three. Hopefully you can see that. They're spooled out, so it might look like more, but it's just two main, well, three main, I guess. Nice roots on there. I'm just going to pull it apart. I'll take the one that's larger off by itself. Two that are smaller can go together. Pop that in. Pop that in. So this is just an annual grass, as far as I'm aware, this bunny tails grass. I've never had it over winter here and I don't believe it's supposed to. So this just is little right now, but these will grow up. This might be two plants here. I think it is, but put it in there. There, all the dusty miller and bunny tails grass are potted up now. Okay, I think that's got to be the end of my my stuff today. I've taken a few hours here, got quite a bit done. I'm really happy with what I've gotten done, uh, but I do have more things to do in the house. So, and I think this video is getting really long. I got all those seeds planted, which is great. Get, get all that seed sowing done. Uh, I up potted a bunch of little seedlings. I've up potted a, a bunch of uh, Dusty Miller and Bunny Tails grass and I actually divided all of these as well. So the Dusty Miller and the Bunny Tails grass have been just living in my greenhouse. Now I'm cheating a bit because they are on a heat mat out here. 
So it's set on a temperature controller and it just makes sure that they don't get so that the soil doesn't freeze at night basically. And uh, I put a frost blanket over it at night because we have been getting up until now, we've been going still down to minus 20 Celsius at night. So that's really cold. We are forecast to start getting a little bit warmer. So I might be able to turn off that heat mat. You normally don't want a heat mat underneath these things, but because the surrounding temperature was so cool, it wasn't really negatively affecting the plants, but we're supposed to be warming up even at night now. So I should be able to turn that off soon and just use the frost blanket at night. The seeds that I sowed and the seedlings that I divided will be going back in the house that they're not quite ready. I thought about leaving the, the zinnias and the marigolds to germinate and grow out here, but I think I'm just going to take them in and I can bring them out in a few weeks once I'm not as worried about the temperatures out here. And once I get a little more organized out here, because I'm kind of filling up my space as I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing out here. I don't have all the shelves I want yet and I have, like I said, construction stuff going on. I am going to put these back in their, their space on the shelf, but before I leave you, I want to show you something that's happened out here in the time that we've, we've been out here working. So hopefully you can see the beautiful blooms. Where's the tag? I think it's called White Hero. What is this called? White Prince. Check out this couple of blooms that opened on these tulips while we've been out here. And it's just full of blossoms. What a lovely sight to have in April in Saskatchewan. To be able to come out here and see this is just so pretty. I love it. And these were just tight buds this morning and now they've opened right up in the warm sunshine this afternoon. So that's, I just love it. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.